Now in this video, I'm going to talk about how living things are connected to cells. Because what cells are, cells are actually this building block of life. The reason why we call them the building block of life is because everything, everything that's living has to be made up of cells. And the cell itself, these are two examples of cells right here. The cell itself has to basically perform all of the functions this living thing has to do to sustain life, to be able to live. So, for example, the one here, this uh, diagram right here, this is an example of a bacterial cell. Now, a bacteria is something that is living. It's a living creature or living uh, being, and it's made up of only one cell. So, we call it something, we call it unicellular. That means it's made up of just one cell. Uni means one, so it's unicellular. But even though it's only made up of one cell, and this one cell right here has to perform all this function to keep it alive, we still call living. And if you look at this kind of if you look at this soil right here, this amount of soil would contain roughly 100 million, if not more, bacteria. Each of those bacteria is living. But if you look at the whole hand, the whole hand of soil, that would have more bacteria than there would be humans living on planet Earth. So that's a huge amount of bacteria. So even though these unicellular bacteria are very small, they are plentiful and they're everywhere around us. We also have bigger creatures, and these bigger creatures we call multicellular. Multi means many. So in this case, they're made up of more than just one cell. They'll have more than one cell working together. And examples of these would be the elephant, the flower, the bird, the insect, or the cow. So things that you would think of being uh, living would be multicellular. So, for example, the human would be multicellular, and it would be made up of about 70 trillion cells. And each of these cells is important to perform all of its daily functions. So humans have to move, think, breathe, and we have all of our different cells performing different functions to make sure that's possible. I'm going to cover a quick analogy that compares unicellular with multicellular. Because if you know who Bear Grylls is, he's a man from the show Man vs. Wild, but he's basically famous for being able to survive by himself in nature. So he uses nature to get all the things he needs, food, shelter, and everything else. So he's just one man and he can survive versus the wild. Right? So Bear Grylls would be an example of unicellular. He can do everything by himself. Whereas if you live in a city, that'd be an example of multicellular. Multi means many. So in a, in a city, we've got many people living there. And they all have different jobs to make sure that city runs well, right? So there's teachers, there's police officers, there's firefighters. And they all work together to make sure the city survives and people within the city survive. So multicellular would be like a city, whereas unicellular would be like Bear Grylls, right? So you've got a lone survivor being unicellular, whereas multicellular with a lot of people working together to make sure that city is uh, kept alive. And the elephant would be an example of multicellular, elephant plants or other animals or other plants, all be multicellular, whereas a bacteria... Just one cell in size would be an example of unicellular. What you can see here is we have lots of living things. So, for example, the plants, the birds you hear in the background, or the crickets, will all be examples of living things. So, all of this here will be living. But if you look at what it requires to be able to survive, we, for example, have water. So, water will be right here. And this will be an example of a non living thing as is soil, which the plants need to be able to grow. So you've got, for example, the soil underneath all these plants would be providing nutrients for the plants to grow. We also have air, so for air for the actual gases, oxygen and carbon dioxide, for example, that plants and animals need. And we have something that we often forget that's important, but in this case, the sun. So the sun is very important because it provides energy for plants to grow and we get that energy for us. In that case, all of these would be non-living things, but living things require them to be able to survive. If you have a look over here, we can see pavement. This pavement would, for example, have no soil and no water, and therefore there's no living things there. So some of the non-living components are missing, and therefore you have no living things growing. So it's important to have soil, air, water, and sun for all those living things to be possible. A quick summary of what we covered so far. We said that all living things have to have cells. If they don't have cells, they're not living. We also said that cells are the building block of life. So that means that without cells, we can't survive. So they keep us alive. So anything that has cells relies on those cells to keep it alive. 
So it's not just important that they have cells, but those cells are actually what keeps you alive. And we also said that living things can either be unicellular or multicellular. Remember, uni meant one, so living things can either have one cell or they can have multi, which means many cells. And for example, a elephant or other animals and other plants would be all examples of multicellular living things. Bacteria would be examples of unicellular living things. But we also said that non-living components are really important too. So for example, the soil or the sun or the air, the living things need these, so the cells need these components to be able to survive because they get all the nutrients they need from them.